The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, I'm out. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> and if you think that's hard, wait until verse 48. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. It is a rare person. Whoever feels worthy when they hear verses like these out of context. So I hope you remember what we heard Jesus say last week, which was just a moment ago for the disciples. They have just heard they are blessed. They are blessed whatever life's circumstances. We are blessed. And now Jesus is giving us instructions for living in response to that divine blessing. So let's get the hard part out of the way first. The scribes and the Pharisees spend their entire lives studying the law, trying to follow it and teaching other people to follow it. The Ten Commandments and all the law and all the writings of the prophets. And yet, Jesus does not consider them the epitome of righteousness. We humans, when we have a checklist or a scorecard, are very good at checking things off and keeping score. When the Hebrew people were wandering in the desert for 40 years, it was really important for them to pay attention to God's commandments because they were learning a whole new way to be God's people. They formerly had been enslaved in Egypt, and now they needed to organize themselves to govern their own relationships with each other, free of outside influence, and to trust in the one God who had liberated them, rather than the many gods worshipped by the Egyptians or anyone else. Without constant reinforcement and reminders of the law, it would be very easy to fall back into old habits particularly when you're stressed because you're in the desert. So being very attentive to the letter of the law was important for forming new habits. As we know from our own experiences, though, checking off boxes can become an end in itself. It is easy to lose track of the purposes of, that the boxes are meant to serve. Because we get psychic rewards from checking off things off a list, right? Task task, task. Sometimes you put things on your to-do list just so you can mark them off. <laughs> but the whole of an abundant life is greater than the sum of its discrete parts. So
So Jesus is saying, it's time to step back or go up to the balcony. The letter of the law is still our starting place, but God's righteousness is about so much more than that. So to use an ocean metaphor, if you're not too tired of those, imagine that the laws are particular currents in the ocean, and God's righteousness is the whole of the ocean. Jesus didn't come to do away with the currents, but he came to put the currents in a context. Being more righteous than the scribes and the Pharisees is not a matter of following God's law more closely than they do. I am pretty sure they were sticklers about it and they could beat us. But it is about an attitude of the heart. It is recognizing that there are spaces between the lines of the written law where grace resides. And that without that grace, the law is incomplete. We can follow the law. We can be right and completely miss the mark on God's righteousness, which is love in action. Jesus healed on the Sabbath, which was against religious law, but it fulfilled God's righteousness. Sometimes when I'm having trouble with a passage uh, like this one and words like never, I look at other translations, and the message translates this verse differently. Unless you do far better than the Pharisees in matters of right living, you won't know the first thing about entering the kingdom of heaven. We do know about right living, so we do know the first thing about entering the kingdom. We know that we are divinely blessed and that we are invited in every moment to live in the kingdom. There are no barriers except the ones we imagine or create. Kingdom living is delicious and vibrant. It's delicious because it is well seasoned, and it is vibrant because it is brilliantly illuminated, and we are the salt and the light. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. Each of us has power to enliven what is around us. We may wonder if Jesus thinks we're not up to the task when he asks, if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? Guess what? Salt is incredibly stable. It cannot lose its saltiness, but you should read the commentaries I read this week trying to make this into something that it is not. As we talked about last week, sometimes we wander away from God's love, which is the source of our saltiness, or we may not want to risk being poured out. We might rather stay safe in our little shaker. But our capacity to be the salt of the earth is never diminished. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. This is an amazing statement, actually, coming from the one we call the light of the world, the true light that enlightens everyone, light from light. Because we are created in God's own image, each of us contains a flicker of that true light. And we are not to hide it away, even if it feels risky for us to shine when others can see. We are made to shine with the glory of our creator so that others might see and come to know that they too are the light of the world. So what do salt and light have to do with righteousness? When we let ourselves be poured out, when we let ourselves shine, we are responding to God's love for us by loving God back and by loving others. We, in those moments, are living in God's kingdom and inhabiting God's righteousness here and now. So imagine this church as a really big salt shaker. We are in here together doing our little salt thing. 
Our understanding of who we are as salt is reinforced by being together. We are reconnecting with the source of our saltiness and hearing about all the wonderful qualities of salt and how it makes things more flavorful. But salt cannot do what it does if it stays in the shaker. It must be added to something so that that alchemy can happen. We are meant to season the world with God's love. Even a pinch of salt makes a whole pot of soup better. Now, imagine this church at night, say on Christmas Eve, when it is beautifully lit from within, and the stained glass is luminous. And we are in here, basking in the light of Christ, and reconnecting with the source of light. People passing by can see some of the light from outside, but most of them will not come in. And when we leave, we turn out the indoor lights. The outdoor lights stay on, though. Not just the lights on the building. We become the outdoor lights. We have the capacity to burn brightly, to share our light, and to dispel the shadows of sadness and despair. The prophet Isaiah tells us we need to get out in the world. We can fast and pray, but those are not ends in themselves. Those are the tools we use to direct our action in the world. Fasting and praying are right. If we do them, we are adhering to the law. But acting in the world is righteousness. Loose the bonds of injustice. Share your bread with the hungry. How's the homeless? When we do those things, our light is shining like the dawn, and we are living kingdom lives full of God's righteousness. You are the salt of the earth. How will you let yourself be poured out this week? You are the light of the world. Where will you shine? Let's be alert for people or situations who need a little salt and light this week. And let's be curious about what our tiny pinch of salt or our little ray of light can do to make the world more like God's reign. And then let's come back next week and share our stories and be refreshed so that we can be sent out again. Amen.